In this demonstration, I am going to hollow out a new penny, a penny made from, uh, I believe, post-1981 era, where uh, they have changed the penny from the old version. This is a pre-1981 penny, which is made up of approximately 95% copper and about 5% uh, zinc. And it's definitely more dense, okay? And heavier the newer penny this is a 2004 penny is approximately 95 percent zinc and about five percent copper or, or if anything it's a copper plated on top of zinc very thin plate of copper on top of here and you can hear the difference of the densities if I drop them so here comes the sound if you can try to think with me the sound that we would make if we would have the pure copper penny let's, let's, let's listen okay now listen to the new penny that's 95% zinc. Do that one more time. Here's the more dense penny, the old penny. Here's the new penny. All right, maybe you can hear that. Now, let's do something with these. Since the new penny is 95% uh, uh, zinc with just a copper uh, plated, very thin um, amount of copper plated on the outside of the, uh, of the zinc, we can do some redox reactions that are pretty cool with it. This is almost pure copper, and it's 95% all the way through. So if I was to take a file with it, hopefully no one's an ATF agent here, and I was to just scratch off the outside, and if you can see that, and I'll just try to focus here, you can see that I've just made, just probably take some oxidation off, and that's still the same color of copper. All right. Now, if I do the same thing with the new copper-plated zinc coin, okay, post-1981, all right, I do the same thing, and I take a file and I just etch out, you should see that I get a, a silver-colored type of color here which is indicative of the zinc I'm trying to focus on it so you can see that that's not the color of copper okay that's the zinc coming through and I'm gonna do that to another side of it because this is pure zinc it's the reason why it's not as dense and I'm just gonna etch out or just scrape off the very thin copper coating and expose the zinc on this side alright you can see I expose the zinc Let's make sure I do that really well. And I expose the zinc on the other side. And I'm going to put that in an evaporating dish. And I'm going to put some hydrochloric acid in it. Now, the question I didn't answer is why is it that the lighter or the older pennies, which are less dense than the heavier, more dense copper, 95, is because in about 1980 or so, the price of copper shot up so much that the uh, worth in weight of copper made the penny worth more than the one cent that the US government said it was. So in the hope that people wouldn't mass take out pennies and melt them down and, and, um, and, and um, get money for copper, uh, they had to make a change. They couldn't have the penny worth more than one cent in its weight of metal that makes it. So they went to a cheaper metal, which of course is our zinc and they just copper plated it. Now that adds some interesting demonstrations we can do. We know that copper is resistive to oxidation by H pluses and we know that from the net potential table. If I just zoom up here and look at my net potential table at some point and I would see if I can see it, which I can't, let me just change my focus Thank you. Now if I look at my net potential table, and I'm going to zoom in here so we can see the place to always to start would be the um, standard cell. And the standard cell is right here, right in the middle, we have the zero voltages. And we can see that our H pluses 
get reduced from the acid and they're strong enough oxidizing agent to force the oxidation of all these metals above. When you talk about oxidation, you talk about these half reactions going this way. This is a reduction potential table that shows you the voltages. So going this way would be an oxidation potential, so these are positive. So all of these, when you go this way, these metals are positive enough to force H plus to reduce. Now, if you look where copper is, when copper oxidizes, it's got a negative oxidation potential. Because we're going to go this way, it's negative 0.34. So H plus is from H hydrochloric acid or anything that produces a high number cannot force or is not a strong enough oxidizing agent to force copper to oxidize. So I need something that is lower on the table, in this case, that can force copper to oxidize. And something that would be lower is nitric acid. Nitric acid has a reduction potential of about 0.8. So it's 0.8 volts below the copper. It's, it would be listed here. I don't have it on this table. Is 0.8. It would force the what? The copper, who's negative 0.52, to go in this direction. So the H pluses for the acid will react with the zinc. Where is the zinc? Or zinc is a reactive metal who is above here. Right? It'll react with the zinc, because zinc, when it oxidizes, is positive 0.76 in, in combination with the H+. Plus. That's why the standard cell made those values. But the copper who's below it is not. So I can hollow out this penny with hydrochloric acid. So let's do that. Let's take some of our, I'll take our penny, okay, and we're going to add some hydrochloric acid to it. And we're going to see if we get, okay, hydrogen gas, which is the result of H plus is getting oxidized, uh, H plus is getting reduced by the presence of the H, by the presence of the zinc. So I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid. And hopefully, we see some fizzing. Now, if we put the fizzing, we should see is occurring where I etched out the what? Where I etched out the two places on the copper penny where I exposed the zinc. So there it is. The fizzing you see is occurring in two places. Okay, it's occurring on one side where I etched out and exposed the zinc, and it's occurring on the other side. So these two places where you see the fizzing is the zinc giving the electrons to the H pluses, the H pluses gaining electrons and becoming hydrogen gas. If we let this sit for a while, what we get is a hollowed out penny. The H plus doesn't react with the what? Does not react with the copper. It's not strong enough. You would need something like nitric acid to do that, as I've shown you other, other reactions. So this would work for an hour or so, depending on your concentration of your acid. And what we would get is we would get a penny like the one I'm about to show you, which is hollowed out. So move this to the side, and here is my hollowed out penny. You can see where that's where I was, that, that black lot, that dot is the hollow part. That's where the zinc was. So both sides, and there you go. And it's a hollowed out penny. And if you drop it, it makes almost no sound compared to a real penny because it's just a very what? Thin layer of copper. Now, here is one I just did and I picked it up by accident. There's another hollowed out penny. And this one's a little more shinier. But you can see it's so hollow that I can just crumble it because it's just a thin skin of what? Of copper. The zinc reacted with the H plus, but not with the copper. Right? The H plus is not a strong enough oxidizing agent. Okay, so interesting enough. There is my cop hollow copper penny reaction.